Welcome to Stand, where we help forge spines of steel. I'm your host, Kelly Chivaka, formerly a government watchdog and candidate for U.S. Senate in Alaska. And I'm joined today by my co-host and husband extraordinaire, Nikki Chewbacca. He formerly served at the Department of Justice. We are broadcasting from Alaska's last frontier. Let's give a shout out to our community of standouts, all of those people in our audience who help make this show possible. You can subscribe to our show on your favorite podcast platform on YouTube or on Rumble. You can find all of our links on our website, standshow.org standshow.org today we are joined by an american at the center of our abortion debate gianna jessen gianna is the survivor of an attempted abortion and she has lived to tell her story she's become a pro-life advocate and testified before congress and the Australian Parliament, and she partnered with President George W. Bush to help pass the Born Alive Infant Protections Act. There's so much more of her story to tell, but we would rather hear it from her directly, so let's welcome her to the show. Gianna, welcome to Stand. Thank you so much for having me. We're so excited to have you with us. We've been looking forward to talking with you for a long time, probably ever since we saw her testify, right? Yeah. In Such an inspirational what, testimony. Which uh, testimony did you see? The one before the Australian Parliament was the one that really got our attention. But we know your story. I think there's probably a lot of people on our audience who either don't know your story or maybe know your story but haven't connected it with your name. Um, so we want to get to know you a little bit. But before we do, I want to let our audience know uh, that here at Stand, we are committed to boldly embracing the truth. Um, mm. The truth can be very hard to hear sometimes. So while we boldly embrace the truth, I also want to let you know that the content might not be easy or appropriate for little ears to hear. And mm. so with that, please make your judgment about whether this show is one for your little ears people to listen to. Gianna. Uh, you were born with very little ears, and we would love to hear the story about what happened to you at your birth and what's happened to you since. So could you please share all that with us? <laughs> I'm yes, and I thank you for having me, and I'm reminded on this day that my life has always been like this. We're, broad <laughs> <laughs> we're broadcasting in my kitchen, and I'm so human, and all of this, and I've got cerebral palsy, and... Uh, I, I'm just Jana, and I have cerebral palsy because I actually lived through an abortion. And one thing I would love to say right off the bat is I am alive because of the power of Christ Jesus. I am unashamedly a born-again believer in Jesus Christ. As unpopular and increasingly unpopular as that is to say, I would not even be mm. breathing without his strong arm constantly um, upholding me. But I also want to say that I realize after over 30 years of this work, since I was 14, that there are men and women listening right now that are suddenly flipping out, recalling an incident 20 years ago, yeah. two weeks ago. And I want you to hear me clearly. I am not here to condemn you. I'm here to tell you what the Lord has done for me and that Jesus is the only one that can set you free. But I'm here to tell you about what can free you, not to shame you That's in so any good. way. Even, even if you, you're not into Jesus right now, he's into you. <laughs> but anyway, to answer your primary question, I uh, am adopted and my biological parents were just 17 and my biological mother went to a Planned Parenthood in Southern California, and they said, you're too young to have a kid. You need to go have a late-term saline abortion. A saline abortion is a saline salt solution that is injected into the mother's womb. The baby gulps that solution. It is to burn and blind the baby, uh, burn the baby inside and out, blind the baby, and then she is to deliver a dead baby within 24 hours. But I was that baby that she was aborting. I just didn't die to everyone's great shock and surprise. And mm -hmm. I, this is my favorite thing ever in the world. 
my medical records because yes i do have medical records even though those that oppose me love to say you're so irrelevant you're so 1977 my medical records say uh my name and then they say uh born during saline abortion april the 6th 1977 mm -hmm. 6 a.m 29 and a half weeks two and a half pounds and this is my favorite part no resuscitation required upon arrival at the hospital because i was in fact born in an abortion clinic in los angeles not a hospital and the dude that was trying to murder me just happened to not be at work yet giving the nurse time to call an ambulance and save my life hmm. so it is astonishing but think about that how miraculous Wait, no okay, Jonah, i burned alive for 18 hours and no resuscitation is required upon arrival at the yeah, hospital. that's what I was going to ask is when you say the saline solution is consumed by the child, you were in there for a long time with your skin burning, your eyes burning, your insides burning. It doesn't even seem possible. Be before COVID, I did a lot of work in Italy. I know that sounds ridiculous. Oh, you're doing work in Italy. Like you're going to go on the mission field in Hawaii, you know, <laughs> oh, poor you. But um, I did a lot of work in Italy and I met a man by the name of Dr. Noya, who happens to be one of the top neonatologists in the country. And he comes up to me and he, he says, John, you are a witness to life. Hmm. And he, this guy does surgery in utero on Down syndrome kids. He runs a clinic for Down syndrome kids. This guy knows what he is talking about. So with the help of a dear, dear soul, I, I said, uh, to translate, I said, doctor, can I ask you a couple questions? Because my enemies love to say I'm a liar and I'm this and I'm that because I have no burns on my body. I'm not blind and, and all this. And I guess cerebral palsy isn't enough. Uh, and he said, I believe that the amniotic fluid was more powerful than the saline solution and protected you. Hmm. He said, both he said that is my medical opinion but both and i know both you and i know it was jesus it was jesus and then he went on to say that the pain response in the womb is developed in the seventh month because i asked him doctor i yeah. startle easily and i know that comes with cerebral palsy but i'm not that terrified when the toast is popping up what the heck is going on and he said i believe that your brain remembers hmm you, because the pain response was right there. I was, as he said, you have endured the highest level of physical and emotional trauma that is humanly possible. And, and that's when I began to cry. Mm -hmm. It was so freeing because it's just, uh, it's just, oh, it's just astonishing. It's, Jesus is so good. Well, when you experienced that, when you also were your most vulnerable and so, you know, being in utero when you could do nothing and you're supposed to be protected and cared for, um, there's an emotional trauma that comes with that as well. Yes. Uh, and I'm still so vulnerable. I mean, I, I, I think of this often. I, I'm, I'm a woman and I love being a woman and I, I, I'm, I just love all of that, but I, I have cerebral palsy and I fight so hard and I, 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 I walk through this life limping and leaning on the strong arm of Jesus and I wouldn't be considered, you know, quote, sophisticated by, by the modern, you know, uh, person, I suppose, because I, I just am G. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm not this big shot. I'm just limping and leaning on Jesus because I have to, and it changes your whole life. You know, I think in America, just to, to make this a bit more succinct, we're very obsessed with stories and, you know, book deals and how, how wonderful you can become and, and all of that. And my life is how, how can there be less of me so people who are broken and lost and really need something of substance can hear of of Christ who 
has never allowed one of my bones to be broken, even though I smash into the floor, even though I, 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 you know, it's just astonishing if that makes any sense. The longer I live, the more I find most of that such nonsense. Uh, but people are aching to know what is real and what is true. And that is such a gift uh, of having cerebral palsy. Gianna, we're coming up on a, on a break. Uh, so I'm going to ask a question and maybe we can, you can answer it on the other side of the break. But before I ask the question, I just wanted to mention, I, I looked up what Gianna means before this show and it means God is gracious. Hmm. Yeah. And I just think it's so powerful, uh, because that seems to be the testimony and the story of your life. God's grace, and you've, you, you've just been speaking so powerfully to that. Um, the question I'd like to ask, and we'll, we'll talk about it on the other side of the break, is uh, after you were, your birth, you were placed in foster care, and then you were adopted. And we'd like to ask if you ever met your biological mother and, and sort of the, the story behind all of that. So uh, after this break, folks, we'll be back with Jonna Jessen and uh, talking with her about her story of life. Stand by. WECA is a private security services company operating in Alaska and across the U.S. with nearly a decade of experience providing personal protection, medical support, surveillance, and facility event armed and transport security. WECA provides state-of-the-art security forces by utilizing current and former law enforcement officers, former military, and medical personnel to provide for a client's needs in all situations. For more information on WECA and its security services, contact 260-337-8263. We are back with Jonna Jessen on stand and talk about somebody who has lived a life of standing, not just standing for truth, but clearly standing for grace and love and standing in the midst of incredible physical challenge challenges and yet persevering and not just surviving, but thriving. And as Jana puts it, she just leans on the strong arms of Jesus and on her faith in him. So we're, we're back with you, Jana, on the uh, at the end of the last segment, I started to ask a question about what happened after uh, you survived the abortion, you were placed in foster care and then adopted. Could you tell us a little bit about that story and about whether you ever met your biological mother and if there's a story behind that? Yeah. Um, so I was placed in emergency foster care with a bunch of morons who decided they didn't like me. So I had to be taken out of that home because they would shut me in a room for long periods of time. And, uh, but the Lord was with me from my birth has been, and I was placed in a beautiful home by 17 months at 17 months in the home of a woman by the name of Penny. And I believe that God used my penny to save my heart actually just save me uh, because by 17 months old, I'm highly traumatized. I can't move. I'm diagnosed with cerebral palsy then. They're, every doctor is looking at Penny and saying, there's no hope for this kid. She's never going to get out of a bed. She's never going to hold up her head. She's never going to be anything. And she just smiled and didn't believe them, prayed for me, and did my physical therapy three times a day. And I began to progress, hold up my head. Well, that's great. She's never going to, you know, crawl or hold up. You know, she's never doing anything. I did the next thing. So I was walking because of Penny and Jesus uh, by three and a half with a walker and leg braces. I, I no longer walk with a walker and leg braces. I have a limp, which is kind of interesting. Um, I don't mind my limp, but I've had to work through, mm -hmm. a, and still I'm working through a very emotional thing about seeing my own movement uh oh it's still so hard like i could like i posted a video the other day of of these triumphs we had in in uh in my training sessions with coach uh, a navy <laughs> navy guy and we worked so hard but i saw my movement and and sometimes i'll just sob hmm. and so i 
because I've been told horrible things. <laughs> so, uh, so that's quite, uh, that's a very vulnerable thing. And but anyway, I, I I went on to run two marathons on my toes, which was ages ago. It kind of doesn't really matter wow. anymore, but I did do it. And um, and then I I work the eight hours with with the Navy guy a week, and all this. And I'm just determined to do the harder things, uh, try. I'm really just determined to try all kinds of things in the face of obstacles so that other people can see that they can, they can live the impossible. So then after uh, I was adopted at three and a half by my foster mother, Penny's daughter, which made my foster mother, Penny, my grandmother, who was my absolute heart she was everything to me i i lost her in 2014 but i remember when she was dying she said in her spunky way everything is gonna work out for you and i said in my frank way back how do you know she said something i'll never forget because you are so kind hmm. and for someone who's constantly misunderstood and hearing that from a woman who's cared for 56 foster children, of which I was one, as a single woman, and asked for the drug addicted from the woman, the most disabled, knowing that I'm walking because of her, it was unbelievable. It was a mother's blessing as she was dying. And so I had an interesting adoption. It was very challenging in many ways, but I see God's hand in that as well. And then to, if we have time, do I have time to answer your question about my biological mother? Yes, please. Okay. So then um, I was on a plane one day, and I know this will sound very cuckoo to people who do not walk with Jesus, but he says, my sheep know my voice, will know the voice of Jesus. And that voice will never be like, hey, go commit adultery. Hey, you know, <laughs> none of that it has to line up with the Bible. But I was on a plane one day. And I'm telling you, I heard in my heart, what would you do if your biological mother came to an event? Because my adoptive mm. mother had met with her and told her I forgive her, and but that I just didn't want to meet with her. And she, you know, she we did our best with that. And and so I hear in my heart, what would you do if your biological mother came to an event? What would you say? What would you do if she tried to interrupt it? What would you do? And it was. I should have had a clue because it was like a, a trial attorney just firing questions. What would you do this and what would you do that? And tell me the end of this. Uh, but two weeks later, I was greeting people as I always do, each person after the, an event. And a woman came up and she said, hi, I'm your mother. Wow. And I remembered the preparation on the plane two weeks before. Hmm. And I just prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed, Jesus, Jesus, quietly, Jesus, 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 help me, Jesus, help me, Jesus. Because it felt like the universe was just crushing me. It was the heaviest mm. thing ever. And I knew that this was sent to take me out. And I knew that she was not my enemy, but it was a lot. And I, I looked at her and I was very, very uh, specific in my language. I said, ma'am, you must need to know that I am a Christian and I forgive you. I don't want your forgiveness. I said, ma'am, you must need to know that I am a Christian and I forgive you. I don't want your forgiveness. Your father is this and you are this and you are an embarrassment to this family. Hmm. And then I knew what to do because the Lord was directing me. I said, ma'am, you must need to know that I'm a Christian and I forgive you, but I will no longer allow you to speak to me in this manner. And I got up and I walked out and that was it. Hmm. And I think part of her anger was she could see that I was not in fact hers, but Christ's. That she could have told me I was the devil himself but it, it wouldn't matter. I am Christ. And my job was to forgive her. She made her choices from there. But if she accepted my forgiveness, she would have to come to grips with what she had done. And I do not believe hmm. she was willing to do that. 
It's a really powerful it was very story. Difficult. Well, Gianna, some of the things that I just want to highlight that you've said that I think are really important for people who are listening. Um, there's someone listening who needs to hear that their kid is going to be okay, that they're going to be healed, that they're going to overcome whatever sickness or diagnosis or pronouncement has been put on them. I've been holding back tears while you've been telling your story because Nikki and I have a child where the same thing was said about them. And everybody yeah. told us this will never happen and you're wow. stupid for and you're going to live your life in the hospitals. Yeah. And we also just refuse to believe. And so many people um, said that we were just so foolish and so stupid for having faith. That kid wow. is phenomenal now, right? Not one of those disabilities or illnesses or handicaps or sicknesses hangs over that child's life at all. Wow. But that is not what we were holding in our hands at the beginning um, huh. and what we were encouraged to discard. And, uh, and that's what I hear in Penny's story. And there's someone listening right now who needs to hear that, that there is reason to believe. Yes. And like you, okay, there were two of you, right? And obviously, but there was just one woman, right. to my knowledge, Penny, that believed God for me. One, yeah. not an entire church or church group or a big cheerleading section. I love that. No, but also, don't you feel like you were changed forever by <sighs> the people who mocked you, by your suffering, by choosing the harder way? Not that I glorify suffering, but th didn't that impact you? I think it's important to glorify suffering. We've lost the theology of suffering in America, and it is something that other countries have on us. When you, and you do this really well, when you can um, see your suffering as a gift, you understand more the jewels in the middle of it. And I agree with you. We became stronger and better through that and what we saw in it because we embraced it rather than run from it. Um, that's one part of your story. The other part of your story that I think is so important is that you walk out for the, the grace and forgiveness and um, love that you have experienced, that you bear witness to. You walk out and show. And um, oh. you started your interview with that. And... I didn't know how you're going to answer the story with your birth mom. I was just curious to see how you're going to answer that when Nikki asked it. Um, I think there's someone listening right now who needs to hear that. There's so much love and grace and forgiveness to be offered, and especially through the relationship that we have with Jesus Christ to God. And what you did, I don't even know what the seeds are that you sowed in your birth mom's heart. And may they be watered and bear fruit. Um, but I can tell that you just bearing witness like that matters. And someone needs to hear that, that there's grace and forgiveness for them. We're up on a break. This is fantastic. We have so much to ask you. I want to get into some of these tough questions about abortion policy. We make it neutral. But for you, um, you're the living product of our nation's policies. Let's talk about Planned Parenthood and abortion when we come back on Stand. Stand by. Hit subscribe. We'll see you on the other side of this break. Africa New Day with mission is actually to create leaders, change a culture, and transform a nation. We believe that this is an area where God wants us to make a difference. You know, He has called us the light of the world. Well, where does the light shine? Where there is darkness. As you pray with us, as you contribute to our efforts, we believe that together we can make a difference. We are back with Jonna Jessen, and she's just been sharing her powerful personal story of uh, overcoming incredible challenges and of forgiveness and grace and faith and the power of those things to help us stand in the face of the many challenges we face in life. And just so inspiring and encouraging to speak with you, Jonna. If you want Jonna to come speak uh, at an event, uh, you can reach out to her at assistant at jessen.com. That's assistant at jessen.com. 
email her there for speaking engagements or interview requests. You can also uh, purchase products. She has her own online store, uh, and you can purchase products from that store at johnnajessen.myshopify.com. That's johnnajessen.myshopify.com. We'll have this information, too, in our episode summary, so you can uh, click on that and, and go there um, later as well. So with that, John, I want to move into, as Kelly mentioned at the end of the last segment, uh, talking a little bit about abortion policy. Uh, you were involved in the passing of the Born Alive Infant Protection Act in 2002. Uh, I, I love that in part because my college professor and mentor, Hadley Arcus, was a an arc was the architect of that um, yeah. of that act, and so and you know That's him a great as well. Guy. Yeah. So, well, what a small world. But uh, we're in in a in a time now where the abortion debate has escalated in the wake of the Supreme Court's recent opinion overruling Roe v. Wade and then passing um, the decision now to the individual states and state state legislatures to decide. Basically, saying the people of each state. Um, are to decide this. And so there are many political leaders, um, uh, advocacy groups on both sides of the debate, uh, but uh, Planned Parenthood is um, continuing to lead the charge to push for abortion procedures, and not just for abortion, but uh, you know, pushing for a right to abortion in each state, meaning also the right to a successful abortion. In other words, uh, in their view, a child like yourself who would have survived, who survived an abortion like that, should still have their life terminated, even if they were uh, born alive. And so in early this year, Republicans in the House passed a bill that would require health care providers to provide the same medical care to a child who survives an abortion as uh, they would to another child who was born before nine months or at nine months who, in, you know, has medical complications, um, but wasn't intended to be aborted. It's an effort to protect the life of infants uh, born alive under abortion. And while we already say infanticide is wrong in the United mm -hmm. States, apparently every Democrat in the House voted to leave the most vulnerable, ba vulnerable babies without proper medical care. So they, they voted against this this bill wondering what your thoughts are and what your message would be um, to groups like Planned Parenthood and, and others and, and, and those who voted against what seems, I think, to most Americans, a very common sense uh, approach to this and just saying if a, if a child survives an abortion, you've got a human being here that you need to provide medical care for and protect. What, what do you say to those who disagree with that and say, hey, no, uh, the right to an abortion, if a state now passes that, should be the right to a successful abortion? I would not want to be them standing before a holy God. The innocent, the blood of the innocent is on their hands. And... The blood of over 60 million children cries from the ground like that of the blood of Abel into the ear of God. He hears it. He doesn't forget any of them, any one of them. And I would not want to be these people. It tells me that their thirst for death is demonic. It tells me uh, that it, it it's just... The desire for for snuffing out the most innocent, it, it's just it's just so wicked. I can't even believe that this is even a question, even a debate, but it tells you the level of wickedness. It is evil, it is wrong. That is what I say. You are evil. You need to repent. You need Jesus. I would not want to be you standing before the Lord of hosts because Woe to any of us who who uh, who harm 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 children and 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 to just be be rejoicing in their death is just I, I have I have I have no no words and the other thing that comes to mind is that in their mind if they if they give into or concede this okay 
will we'll allow proper medical care for a child that survives an abortion. They have to admit that they are killing children the entire time. That is what mm. they do not want to acknowledge. And that is what they do not want the populace to be thinking of. And I am quite concerned about the abortion pill procedures because now we have people in their houses uh, taking abortion pills and delivering children in the toilet, on beds, in bathtubs, all alone. I mean, the amount of, of trauma, um, it's, it's just an abomination. All of it is just so wicked. What would you say if I could just follow up with that real quick? Um, you know, there are a lot of moms out there, a lot of women out there who are uh, post-abortive. And to your point, you're talking about the trauma uh, mm -hmm. uh, of abortion. Any mother going in and getting an abortion, and it's a it's a very difficult thing for, and and a lot of them suffer with grief afterwards, um, guilt, um, and a lot of pain. And it's shame. And I, yeah. And so, how, what, what's what's your message of sort of encouragement? uh to them um who might be dealing and wrestling with the just the the pain and the the, the shame um uh, that they might be feeling their the guilt uh after the fact there are two things i would say one is there is now therefore no condemnation for those who are in christ jesus so if you repent of that abortion and you give it to jesus and you ask him to forgive you he doesn't remember it anymore and ask him to help you forgive yourself. Uh, why punish yourself for the rest of your life for something that Christ died for and doesn't remember anymore once you have repented? And the other thing is I would say a lot of pregnancy resource centers, I, I speak for many of their fundra fundraising banquets. And by the way, if you're listening to this and you're pregnant and freaked out, Go to your local pregnancy resource center. All their services are confidential and free, and they will help you. But they also, at those centers, often have something called a, a post-abortion recovery program. And I would get involved mm -hmm. in one of those where you can really uh, go through the process of grief, but then forgiving yourself, because that is what you really need, to be free, to really be free. Mm. Jenna, earlier you mentioned, I want to follow up on something you said um, earlier in the interview. You talked about misconceptions people have and that you run into this all the time when you're out advocating. Can you share with us what some of those common misconceptions are and how you address them? Misconceptions in, in what regard? I think about what you were saying about yourself, yeah. how they, they misconstrue oh. you, mis, you know, mischaracterize oh. you. But you know, you know what's interesting is, yes, I get it from both sides, actually, mm -hmm. Christians and non-Christians alike. I've always been just uh, one to march to the beat of my own drummer, and I've had to, actually, because I've had to, to learn to walk twice um, <laughs> after spinal surgery. I've had to do, find a different way of doing things, and when you're not sort of like everyone else, you are often misunderstood and, and criticized or whatever. And, you know, it just goes with the territory. But I would just, I just try to keep things simple. We're talking about, I am a Christian, a follower of Christ, and I should expect that there will be opposition when I'm standing for him and standing for, for hmm. innocence. Um, but there's also, I have incredible joy and life. But my priority is, First, the gospel, because I believe we are in a spiritual battle, and I don't believe that you can win a spiritual battle with uh, earthly weapons. You need to fight uh, with the same with the same weapons, uh, so to speak. So, uh, my my first priority is the gospel, because if we seek first the kingdom of God, all of these children, <laughs> my my interpretation, all of these children will be added unto us. We, we then mm -hmm. can save innocence. But it's very difficult to tell people who feel they have no reason not to kill their child, just don't kill your child when they don't know Jesus. 
I mean, mm -hmm. they, they're used to living for themselves. You've got to start with the root of the problem. And as, as complicated as we've made that, I just try to keep things that simple. My life is Christ. And whatever that costs is whatever it costs. In fact, I say quite often, as I was told <laughs> by the Lord once while weeping over not having any children of my own, uh, hmm. not that I won't, but I, 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 I had committed to him very in, in my youth that I would not sleep with a man who would not marry me because of what the Bible says. And I had no idea how long I would have to wait and how many parties I would have to attend. <laughs> and uh, I remember him saying, you cannot change a world that you resemble. Do not go through life creating Ishmaels and calling them Isaacs. Hmm. Wait on the Lord. And it wasn't a reproof, but it was the most, you ever have a moment like that with the Lord and you, and you will never forget it as long as you live. He means business. And at that moment, he wasn't just my father and best friend. He was my sovereign king, and I was to bow. Hmm. That's good. That's good wisdom. Also, probably something someone needed to hear today. It's There's a, a blessing in the waiting, and you're not forfeiting oh. anything. So there's a suffering that can come with it because there's a that patience that's required. Um, it says in first Corinthians, love is patient is the first thing it says. Love is kind. The first thing love will always cost you is time. Love is patient. It costs time. Um, oh, I never thought about it like that. Yeah. But huh. when you, when you read through scripture, the love language of God is obedience. And so when we are patient and wait on the Lord, it will cost us time. Um, but there is always that blessing. We don't have a microwave God, <laughs> mm -hmm. where we just send up an order and ding, it comes out. So I love what you're saying. We're coming up on a break. And on the other side of the break, I want to just talk about some of the challenges that you've faced and overcome and ways that you deal with some of the arguments that come your way. And that'll be our end of the interview, which feels like it's just gone so fast. I feel like we could talk forever. <laughs> we so appreciate this conversation and the encouragement and edification that uh, you've given. I just want to take a second to address as we come up on the break, we need to acknowledge, um, I think at this point, 45 or 50 percent of people my age, women my age, have had abortions. So if you're listening to this episode today, um, I want to emphasize what Gianna has said and what Nikki and I believe. There is no shame in what's happened in the past, but there is a path forward. And I like what solutions Gianna has outlined for us today talk to many women about their stories and it doesn't need to stay in silence something that you hang over you um, this can be something that we move beyond together all right we'll catch you on the other side of the break stand firm stand strong Welcome back to Stand with Kelly and Nikki Chewbacca. Today we're talking with Gianna Jessen. If you've made it this far in the show, then you get to know if you leave a review this week, we will be happy to select one of our lucky reviewers to win this awesome Hydro Flask sticker from the show. So be sure to leave your review and we will get a sticker sent out to somebody on our Stand Out community. All right, Gianna, I want to chat with you about... Um, some of the things that you come up against in people's understanding of abortion, because you've lived through one, you are, I guess I would say, the victim of our national policies. We talk a lot about the esoteric nature of abortion and women's reproductive rights, and then then there's your story, and a lot of people don't expect to talk to somebody like you. Um, I think you said something really profound in our last segment when you said we come from different starting places. And when you come from a different starting place, you end up at a different conclusion. It reminded me of something that happened to us in law school. I was sitting in the foremost constitutional scholars class. I think people would still say this about this professor today. And he was talking about constitutional law at the turn of the century and how the Supreme Court thinks about abortion. He said one abortion procedure the Supreme Court ruled unconstitutional. And again, if you have little ears, this is not something they want to hear. Okay. He said, if you, uh, the court had ruled that if you do the procedure where you slit the baby's head open and suction out its brain to abortion it, to abort it, then that's unconstitutional. 
However, if you go into the mother's womb and dismember the baby limb by limb, that's constitutional. And he posed this question to a class of about 150 soon to be Harvard law grads um, class. We already have established scientifically that a fetus can feel pain between 12 to 15 weeks. So assuming that the fetus can feel pain when these procedures are being performed, which one is more humane? Dismembering the baby limb by limb or cutting open its head and suctioning out its brain? And the class already knew my positions on everything. I'll just make clear I was vocal in law school. So yeah, I sat People and, always know Kelly's position on pretty much I, everything. How come, how come I'm not surprised? This, this is not surprising <laughs> to all the fans watching. I don't, um, I've never been one to hide. Speaking of, when we would go to parties as a kid, my parents would say to like little eight-year-old Kelly, um, can you please not talk about politics or religion at the party? Ah, no. <laughs> <laughs> And I would be so grumpy. I would say things like, then why are we going? And what's the point of talking about anything else? Those are the only topics worth talking about. And of That's course, funny. I would, they didn't think so, Gianna. <laughs> I would ruin every party. Um, I always had a great time. I would come back from every party, like exhilarated and full of energy. And my parents would be fuming in the car, which meant that ah! I stopped getting invited to parent parties. But I always had incredible conversations with adults who left very angry. All that to That's say, hysterical. fast forward to law school. I sit and watch 149 classmates for about 30 to 45 seconds sit and seriously ponder this question, which is more humane, which procedure? And they're taking notes and thinking about it. And I finally raise my hand. <laughs> and he's so excited that someone finally has the answer. And I said, with all due respect, Professor, if we assume, because of course everyone knows my position on this already, that a fetus can feel pain, then both are equally inhumane. Oh, I know, I know, I know, but, and I share this story because these- No but. There's no, no buts. But. These 149 people are likely the people making decisions and leading the country right now. They're in the Senate. They're at the top of the policy firms lobbying for things. They're probably at Planned Parenthood, we start from a different place, right? I wanted to ask you, um, what are some of the things you run into, um, the, the stuff that's just like most shocking when you are out there advocating for, for life positions where you go, wow, people really don't understand what's happening here, that, that our audience needs to understand and needs to be ready to talk about. What would you say this is what we need to understand and kind of demystify or clarify. An interesting question because I have so many thoughts depending on who we're talking about. But one thing I think we need to deal with uh, as conservatives, as Christians, as pro-life people is the issue of ego the issue of, you know, ego at all in our lives. And, and it is, are our lives supposed to be about us or, or Christ? Or is it just more about me, but clothed in conservatism and patriotism? Hmm. I'm just not into that. And then, because it's all going to burn up anyway. Anything that was all about me is not going to matter. It's all, right. it's all for the glory of God. And, uh, the other thing is I find it so astonishing to live in a time where we have evidence for something. It's on video we have, or someone right. saw it for tech. And, and that didn't happen. You over and over, just a denial, a constant denial of what is true. No, that's not true because I don't want it to be true. It is my truth. No, there's no such thing as my truth. It is truth or not. Hmm. It is absolute or it is not. It is not I'm making up the truth according to my mood or whatever I want it to be. No. So we have that problem going on. And I just, listen, I, I am not childish, but I'm very childlike in the way that I live. And I, because I must lean on Jesus or I am <laughs> in a big mess. <laughs> and I, I just think 
people need him and they need to understand that what really matters and they need to understand that creating their own gospel their own version of truth mm -hmm. is only going to lead to more death and really who cares how many cocktail parties i go to uh how, or how much money i make or don't make no these things are not what are important anymore anymore i'm so tired of people being content with the surface of things the surface is right. not it's it, uh, does that any of this make sense what i'm saying yeah because i'm absolutely. seeing it everywhere I'm, I'm seeing a denial of the truth i'm seeing a bunch of egomaniacs on all sides of things me 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 me, me. how about people are hungry they're thirsty they're broken hearted their dad just left their dad hasn't been around. Their mom is out with her 12 boyfriends. Whatever. Nobody to take care of our kids. And you might think, are, are we coming up on a break before I continue my rant? No, you're fine. <laughs> okay. Because I, I, as someone who grew up in a broken home and who has had to be on her own most of her life, I, 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 I just, I cannot believe what an orphaned generation this is. Hmm. people just just leaving their responsibilities as as parents so often and god bless the ones that are grown up emotionally and know how to be adults hmm. but i just i feel like we are our priorities are a mess and i don't mean to be so so negative but can we grow up a little bit can we look at things as they actually are if our lives are about us let's admit that and and repent and 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 grow but let's not be all about me and all about my you know me time uh i don't know i'm irritated it's, i think that's good what i hear you saying is it's really important if we're gonna value life all around it requires oh, sacrifice sorry, here's what i meant to say it's not that we don't know guys people know they're killing a baby now and they don't care hmm. they don't care anymore that's the problem. We have people with hmm. such a coldness of heart who just want to have sex with them. Remember they want to have sex with them. I mean, now you, you've got the dating apps where you can bring home three guys in one night. Right. So what this would you say? What would you say huh? for the people who are listening and want to do something? What advice do you have for them to be more effective advocates for the pro-life causes? You're out there every day. Let's say someone's listening and they care about this, but they're not out there every day. What can they do? How can they be effective? Be an awesome person in their daily life. I mean, if you're, if you um, can, if, if you can build relationship with people mm -hmm. and they know you are who you say you are, you can get a whole lot of truth sewn into their lives one on one just mm. do what the lord has you doing every day as a normal person being awesome being kind as you can be being truthful as you can be but with kindness right um you know that kind of thing i'm a huge advocate of just one on one and living out what you believe that will speak volumes yeah. i mean like I said earlier, people don't want to hear about Jesus anymore, but I have a balance issue and sometimes I freeze in place as a result of, of brain trauma. And when you have to walk up to a stranger and look at them and say, may I please have your arm because I have a balance issue? Hmm. Guess what? You've got them. <laughs> they would look like a total jackass if they walked away and you can say whatever you want. So you can, you can talk about how great Jesus has been hmm. to you and how and who he is. So you can see why, I mean, if if I had to live all of this again and limp my way all the way to heaven, leaning on the strong arm of Jesus so that these legs could act as a net to be a fisher of men, I would do it all again. Mm. That's beautiful. Uh, Jana, if we're, we're gonna be wrapping up here in a moment, but you recently made a huge, you had a huge physical accomplishment. You talked about it earlier on the show. You referenced the, the Facebook post and we'd, we'd like to show it uh, for some folks to see what you were able to do. Can you please briefly just 
in, the, in these next, say, 30 seconds or so, uh, share that story with us? Sure. Um, in my case with my cerebral palsy, when my hands are empty, that is my safety to my brain. Because if I fall, which I fall quite well, actually, and not so often, but when I do, I can catch, you know, I can fall well with sure. empty hands. But to fill them and to balance and all this um, it is to deliberately take away what makes my brain feel safe is the only way I can grow and build new pathways, which I want to emphasize. You can neural pathways that can be rebuilt in the brain, people. So there's always hope because we're seeing this. So five years ago when my intense training began, I would freeze in place. I couldn't uh, hold anything or whatever and walk. And so I, I just picked up traffic cones and we were astonished because coach is a, a trainer and a physical therapist. And I was able to process like holding those up over my head, walking at the same time and doing motor planning, what's called motor planning, which is too long to get into now by going over, walking over branches at the same time, doing all of these different things, which is evidence that God has created new neural pathways in my brain wow. so we just keep wow. working and working and working and working and uh it's been a tremendous it was a miracle so you can go on my facebook wall and see the videos there even though it's hard for me to <laughs> see my 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 own movements uh but i i'm getting better <laughs> yeah well, we pray blessings over you, Gianna. May the Lord continue to bless and protect you and smile upon you, be gracious to you, show you his favor, give you his peace, and remove the trauma of the stings of those harsh criticisms from the past so that you can see yourself through his eyes and see your walk and your limp and your accomplishments um, the same way that Paul saw his, that it, he prays for the thorn to be removed but realizes it's actually a blessing from God because I think everything you shared today is a blessing that there's little nuggets in there that the right people needed to hear at the right time, including what you just shared. New neural pathways can be built to erase the pain, erase the trauma, even erase the disability. Gianna Jessen has been with us today. Thank you so much. We appreciate it. You can find her shop, giannajessen.myshopify.com. We will put it at the top of our show notes. You can book her assistant at giannajessen.com. We so appreciate you being with us. We will be on next week, Stand with Kelly and Nikki Chewbacca. You can find us at standshow.org. Thanks so much.